This is Valley News Live at noon. We start with a story that's new at noon. The Red River Valley SWAT team executed a high-risk search warrant in Fargo, putting a Bearcat SWAT vehicle by Eagles Elementary School. The scene was near the elementary school along 35th Street South and University Drive this morning. Fargo police tell us the SWAT team was working with the narcotics team on the search. SWAT was eventually called off and a narcotics unit stayed to further investigate. The community of Grand Forks is honoring police officer Cody Holty, who died in the line of duty one year ago today. Law enforcement officers and family members gathered outside the Grand Forks Police Department this morning to pay their respects. Holty has been honored with a Purple Heart, Medal of Honor, and his name is now on the Law Enforcement Memorial in Washington, D.C. Now, on May 27, 2020, Officer Holty responded to an apartment in the 2600 block of South 17th Street to help other officers serve an eviction notice. They were overtaken by heavy gunfire from the suspect, and Officer Holty later died at All True Hospital. The man charged in the death of Holty is scheduled to go on trial on June 29th. Well, another chilly start to the day, and Memorial Weekend is approaching. Let's check in with meteorologist Nathan Hopper. Nathan, happy Thursday. Happy Thursday, Brian, and the good news for your Memorial Day weekend is I'm not expecting temperatures like what we saw this morning to be with us still for the weekend. Look at some of these coldest temperatures we saw today. Roosevelt, Minnesota, 26 degrees. Williams, 27. Waskish, 29 degrees. Roseau and Badger both saw 30 degrees this morning, and then quite a few folks saw below freezing, 31 degrees for areas like Humboldt, Adams, uh, Langdon, and uh, yes, it was cold enough for s snow. Flakes. This is from the Cullum, North Dakota area. David captured these big flakes there uh, this morning. Thanks, David, for sharing your uh, snowy photo with us here uh, this morning. Temperatures have improved greatly from where they were. We're seeing 50 in Halleck, 48 in Langdon, 46 in Roseau. Still seeing a pocket of cooler air where we are seeing uh, uh, um, some clouds and some showers still ongoing. But if you're stepping out this, uh, this lunchtime in Fargo, 54 degrees, but a little bit of a breeze does make it feel a bit cooler around the uh, around the region. So there's the showers we're seeing uh, right now from the Ellendale area and points southward. Elsewhere, seeing some sunshine up toward the north, which helped to warm those temperatures up in the northern valley quite quickly. But we see if we take a close look in here, some soaking rain showers moving to the Britain area, Langford heading toward Gwinter, Oaks, perhaps toward Lidgewood here pretty soon. So again, good moisture that we need. And Brian, of course, I'm talking about a warm up in on in the offing as we go into the next couple days. We'll break that down in a few minutes. We'll stay tuned with you to find out what to expect. Sounds good. Thanks, Nathan. Well, a man is seriously hurt after being hit by a train in Grand Forks. Police got a call around two in the morning about a man bleeding near a downtown bar. He was identified as Tony Dolphin in. He was rushed to the hospital with what police call a severe injury to his left arm. Anyone with information on this incident is being asked to contact Grand Forks police. Two men working on a home are being credited for saving it from going up in flames yesterday. It happened in the 1000 block of Ashley Drive in West Fargo. The truck is used to carry equipment to work on homes in the area. One man is in the hospital after he jumped into the truck as it was burning to move it out of the driveway so the house wouldn't catch on fire. Firefighters say his actions saved the home. Yes, we seen the truck burning up the house. So my partner, I mean, he jumped inside of the van tried to run it across over to the other side of the road. I mean, it was either the van in the house or just the van. We got it away from the house. It's, it's, that's the only good thing about it, I guess. No word yet on how that fire started or the condition of the man who was taken to the hospital. Students are back in class today after a gun incident put a Wolfston Middle School on lockdown. Police and school officials say a gun was found in a student's backpack yesterday. An email sent out to parents indicated the child was being held by law enforcement, but no information is being released regarding the type of gun or the intentions of the student. Police say there is no active danger to students, staff, or community members. The latest deadly mass shooting is once again renewing calls for Congress to pass legislation to end gun violence. Skylar Henry reports from the White House. Flags have been lowered to half staff at the White House in memory of those killed in Wednesday's deadly mass shooting in San Jose. President Biden in a statement urged Congress to take immediate action to end gun violence, saying every life that's taken by a bullet pierces the soul of our nation. We can and we must do more. There's a sameness to this and that numbness I think is something we're all feeling. 
California's Governor Gavin Newsom didn't mince his words as he expressed his anger and frustration at yet another deadly shooting. It begs the damn question, what the hell's going on in the United States of America? What the hell's wrong with us? Some members of Congress hope this latest gun violence spurs them into action. The time is now and I am ready for a vote. But judging by a Senate committee hearing on gun violence in March, the parties remain far apart on this issue. Every time there's a shooting, we play this ridiculous theater where this committee gets together and proposes a bunch of laws that would do nothing to stop these murders. This is a preventable epidemic. We've got to solve it. Chris Brown is the president of the gun control group Brady and says the pressure is on the Senate. What do you think it takes to, to spark some sort of substantial reform? Look, I think we're very close to seeing substantial reform happen, but I think it's going to take an awakening of a few members in the Senate. There have been 62 mass shootings just this month alone, according to Gun Violence Archive, which defines a mass shooting as four or more people shot or killed other than the shooter. Skyler Henry, CBS News, the White House. The House passed a bill expanding background checks in March, but it has stalled into the Senate. A man is in jail after deputies in Studsman County found a large amount of drugs, cash, and a gun during a routine traffic stop. Deputies seized about 200 suspected fentanyl pills, 20 grams of methamphetamine, 1,400 in cash, and a loaded gun. The drugs have an estimated street value of $8,000. Officers say the pills are designed to look like oxycodone, but contain fentanyl. The 21-year-old Colton Dade is charged with possession with intent to deliver fentanyl, methamphetamine, possession of drug paraphernalia, and carrying a concealed weapon. The Minnesota Department of Transportation is trying out a solution to make streets safer for pedestrians during construction season. A temporary pedestrian refuge island is installed at Highway 75, north of the 4th Avenue South intersection. The community is encouraged to try it out for a few weeks. They're evaluating if the pedestrian island could become a permanent solution for future construction projects. Because of the project, drivers going south on 8th Street won't be able to make a left turn onto the 4th Avenue South. As COVID-19 positivity rates decrease, vaccinations increase and fewer patients are hospitalized. Essential Health is easing visitation guidelines. Starting today, patients are allowed two adult visitors in clinic and hospital settings. Adult patients hospitalized with COVID-19 are still not able to have visitors, except in special situations. And all staff, patients, and visitors still need to wear a mask while in essential facilities. Well, graduation season kicks off in West Fargo tonight with the first of three graduation ceremonies. 25 seniors will graduate from Community High School tonight at 730 in the West Fargo High School Theater. And about 600 more will graduate from Cheyenne and West Fargo High Schools during ceremonies on Sunday at 1 and 4 in the afternoon. Now, as he headed to Memorial Day weekend, Bonanzaville was honoring military, military members and veterans. A new exhibit highlights military vehicles like a Huey helicopter, the 80th anniversary of Pearl Harbor, D-Day, and the Spanish-American War. Doors open at 3 this afternoon and the display is free for veterans. Organizers say it's important to never forget about the veterans that have served and those that are currently serving. Talk about the forgotten generation. And in a, in a big way, um, those who have fought and died for our country are often forgotten. Um, we hear a name, we see a memorial, and we walk away. Here at Bonanzaville, we bring some of that to life. The event kicks off tonight for veterans with the landing of a Lakota helicopter, followed by a picnic prepared by veterans for veterans. The event is from 5.30 to 7 tonight and free for veterans and their families. Well, coming up at noon, a warning as we head into summer. What to look out for if you or your children get a tick bite. We continue to end the week on a chilly note right before Memorial Weekend. Weather up next to plan your day with meteorologist Nathan Hopper.